Hi everyone, welcome back to our open form discussion. Uh, so in the last video, uh, we are just running a piece of foam for a while, just some kind of dry one where we just chug in random numbers and you know, see what happens to the uh, model, um, see what happens to the uh, flow profile and see whether the simulation can run. And of course the simulation could run and that's a good news and uh, I was just uploading it from my other computer uh, into GitHub and uh, pulling from GitHub into uh, this uh, my desktop, so uh, this desktop, this other laptop, whatever. So, yeah. First thing to note, of course, uh, there was some difficulties in uploading it to GitHub since this uh, this file was so big, almost uh, seven hundred megabytes of information. Uh, where were they all coming from? All right. Uh, where were they all coming from? I'll discuss shortly. Uh, but yeah, there were some problems and. This, this, uh, all this was just me, uh, you know, trying to sync it properly. So I'll just skip this. All right. So how big were these? Well, to find out the size of, uh, let me clear this all. To find out the size of the files we are looking at, we can use this uh, thumb, this thing called ls, l r h. Okay. What does it stand for? Let's try l h first. All list. We'll ls and l will just tell you all the files and what are the permissions in them. So you can see that it belongs to me, of course. And uh, all these files were created at some time, and this was uh, yeah, these were the the read, write, and whatever permissions. So let's try l ls lr capital R. So what does LSLR stand for? It will list everything in the subfolders, right? So this is everything in the subfolders. It will tell you every single file, what are its permissions, etc, etc. So I'm going to do LSLH. And what does that stand for? Well, that, that tells us the size, okay? So you see you have a total of 6 MB. And we'll have some 512, 512, etc here. Uh, these are the respective sizes I mean of the file itself they don't tell you what's going on inside the subfolder necessarily and you see this piece of form is about 16 megabytes so if we take a look in one typical times uh, if we do ls l big capital R and H yep you will see everything inside and let's take a look at one of the typical files right so for example 87.5 Oh yeah, 87.5. Uh, this one was a total of uh, 11 megabytes, right? 11 megabytes. Mm, so why are these files so big? Well, you got six megabytes in the U directory, uh, the U, the U file, which is the velocity profile. Epsilon will have another 2.5. K will have another 2.5. All these will contribute to some degree uh, to a very big file, and what that results in is that each, I think, uh, each file, so called, it can uh, very quickly add up. So each file can be as big as like what? Um, here is a 5.9, here is 6, so that's already 12. 12 plus 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, that's about 7.5. That's almost 20 megabytes. You keep adding in, adding this in, um, this one will be about 22 megabytes. So every time step, you'll have at least 22 megabytes of data. All right. Every time step, 22 megabytes. And you can see here is a row of 5 by a row of 4. So at least there are 20 to 24 or 25 uh, time steps. So um, they have lots of data. So, I mean, each, each file being like, what, 20-something uh, megabytes, uh, that will end up in a very big file. So, uh, yeah, uploading it into GitHub presented some difficulties, um, like the remote hanging up and all, but otherwise it's okay. So these are some things to note where you try and upload big files to GitHub. So, yeah, there will be difficulties, so try not to do that. But anyway, uh, long story short, let me go and get pair of you out to show you some of the flow profile 
So yeah, the more the more files we have, I mean the more things we are solving for. So remember we have a we have a K field, we have an epsilon field, we have a U field, we have a P field. Uh, all these will take up data. Mm. So we gotta be watching our data storage very carefully. So yeah. We'll have to find some way of solving that in future. So let's me see. Snappy pipe. Let's go to turbulent piezo foam pipe. And let's see the results. And before that even, let's take a look at what's the lock of the piezo foam actually saying. So let's go to the end. I'm going to press colon and I'm just going to go type some really big number. And there we go, we are at the bottom. So look at this time, 348.275, right? Look at the current number, the maximum current number. This was uh, 0 0.29485, etc, etc. And then now this thing blows up. It's a current number of 23. So obviously something is wrong because we didn't think about putting in our boundary conditions quite right. But let's just see for the sake of interest what what this profile actually looks like and here it is um, we can bring it all the way to about 337 it's still a stable profile um, yeah and <coughs> excuse me so we'll scale we'll just scale the velocities and you see that the the magnitude is as such like uh, the lowest will be 0 0.07 I mean we, we set a speed of 0 0.1 meters a second uh, that's the average superficial velocity otherwise it's a uh, you know most of the profile most of it is red so you see this 0 0.1 here it's uh, really fitted at, at this side okay um, it's about at this point so the turbulent velocity profile should be sort of a very slug flow like kind of thing except for the the part that's going near the wall that will be very uh yeah uh, let me use paint okay so let's save a pipe typical laminar velocity profile parable oh sorry parabolic shape I kind of can draw a parabola correct. Ah, yes, I think I'll use this instead. Parabolic shape as the lab laminar velocity profile. Okay, turbulent velocity profile will be something like this, where you have a big bulge in the middle, and this is the average velocity. So it's almost like slab flow, it's more like slab flow, but it's not exactly slab flow okay in terms of that velocity profile or average velocity profile okay where's pair of you it's underneath okay all right so um let's use a slice filter okay and we'll change it to velocity so you see most of the most of this stuff is in the center the um, also the velocity is uh, trapped in the center so to speak and you see this was there was this little layer here that is uh, slower yeah so most of the velocity is quite uniform ish in the center so yeah uh, let's let's just take a look we can rescale to a custom data range so you want something like 0 0.9 on uh, 0 0.09 and it goes to yep goes to like that and then we can see okay anything lower than 0 0.9 or 0 0.09 that will be in the blue layer the rest is in the center and it looks something like this you see the center yeah so this this is probably what a turbulent profile should look like Okay, so um, yeah, we just got to make sure our K and Epsilon are modeled correctly so we can get a correct velocity profile. 
Right. Whether it's correct or not, it doesn't really matter because these are the wrong parameters we put into piezo form anyway. It was just a dry run. Um, so probably in future videos we want to talk about having the correct uh, correct parameters put into the piezo form solver. Yes. Okay. So we're also trying to find out why this quran number is behaving this way as well. And I'm just going to quit that. Um, let's take a look at the other ones, the piezo foam snappy pipe. And that's the laminar simulation using piezo foam, which should roughly give us the same result as the ICO foam. More or less the same, depending on the solving algorithms. It should be the same. So this is snappy pipe dot foam. Okay, so let's use U. Alright, so we'll scale it accordingly and we'll use the latest time. Alright, and we'll rescale. And what do we have here? You look at this, uh, we have a smooth, uh, smooth ish, smooth -ish parabolic profile. Uh, it should be um, very much like a, um, I think a, what do you call it? Um, yeah, it should be smooth. Yeah, like the parabolic profile we talk about in laminar flow. So this is just to show you that um, even even if you use this uh, icofoam or you know, if you use icofoam or piezofoam, I think more or less you can get the same results provided you give it the correct settings. So you see this entrance region here, this entrance region here. So you'll start having this boundary layer development, and then you'll slowly progress to develop this flow pattern okay so of course this is the this is the uh what do you call that this is the uh, superficial velocity 0 0.0001 and then you have a smooth parabolic profile to uh to a fully developed kind of a flow so yeah so we have shown that uh, piezo form can solve laminar flow problem and we can we also we'll also show that piezo form can solve turbulent flow problem if you give it the correct parameters now uh, so probably the first thing you might ask is that how are we supposed to develop get the correct parameters for let's say k and epsilon so let's see turbulent piezo form so you see uh, zero dot original oopsie cd0 dot original so these are where all the boundary conditions are so we have the we have all these uh, there's the wall function and then uh, there's a zero gradients and all this kind of thing okay so we we just uh, we are very uh, we, are we are neglecting all the effects we just wanted to see whether a piece of foam can run but maybe in the next video we'll talk about how to assign boundary conditions to each of these and uh, if you haven't already done so um, yeah we can look into some uh, basic turbulence modeling so i have a series a kind of a separate mini series of turbulence modeling uh, i'll add it to the playlist um, which is in the already in the description so uh, if you're not aware of it already, please go and watch, I think, at least seven videos about uh, turbulence modeling to get some background on how we arrive at this k epsilon model so that we can understand how to assign boundary conditions to this uh, k epsilon model. Of course, you already know what uh, the. Uh, you already know how to um, derive the Re Reynolds average Navier Stokes. You know how k epsilon comes about and you know how to derive these boundary conditions then you are more than welcome to skip those seven videos and you know just continue on all right so this that that seven videos will be the theoretical background you need to start doing this turbulence modeling thingy all right so thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time bye bye